Today we're going to show you how to install the Vim curbless shower pan. We recently built an awesome curbless shower in a very, very small bathroom. And the first step in that process was to install this pan. So we're going to show you how to do that today. So in this project, we're going to be installing the Vim shower system, curbless shower system. So this is going to allow us to be able to not have to adjust anything with the framing of our bathroom but be able to simply install a pan that will be level with our subfloor and create a seamless, curbless entrance into our shower. So I wanna show you what's in the kit before we get started. In the video that we're gonna be showing you what we're installing, this is just gonna be basically where a tub was. We're gonna install this. So it's gonna be like a 30 by 60 inch thing. So we'll be cutting this pan down to fit our space. So what it comes with is the four by five shower pan. What I really love about this system is the drain assembly. Not just the assembly, but really this cover is really fantastic. And they have different styles of this, but boy, look at that drain. A really nice size drain here. I can't remember, I think that's six by six. Yeah, six by six is basically the size of that drain. So that really has a real sharp look to it. Uh, we'll show you how to put the drain assembly in, but it comes with the drain assembly. It comes with the strainer that you, you know, and it has different finishes. You know, the oil rub bronze, brush nickel, things like that. And then they have different patterns of this. So you can choose which strainer cover that you wanna put in it. But within that drain assembly, uh, we'll show you how to put all this together, but it has a locking ring and Everything attached to that and it comes with two buckets of waterproofing this is a liquid waterproofing in this instance we chose the Laticrete hydro barrier so this is what's going to waterproof this whole system and also partially of our shower walls as well so two gallons of this is definitely going to be plenty to to do in our, in our situation it comes with a shower uh, with a brush and then basically a mesh fabric that you'll be installing in the corners of your shower you have a, a bigger wire or what do you want to call this it's a it's more of a, a fiberglass reinforced mesh this would be used to extend your shower pan so if you wanted to uh, if you had a six foot shower you would use this with a, a feather patch material to basically extend the slope out on the shower and then our main fabric that goes over the pan so this will basically encompass the entire pan with the waterproofing. A couple other things that you might want to consider getting. You need to install the pan with a modified thin set. So make sure you have a couple bags of modified thin set. You're obviously going to need a trial for that. But if you're cutting down the pan, you're going to want a countersink bit. We'll show you how what we're going to do with this. But if you're cutting down the pan, you basically need this to recess the screws into the pan. But make sure you have one of these. This is pretty important if you cut down the pan. For the feather patch, if you're gonna extend your shower, this makes, this the Vim actually makes a corner trial that makes it really easy to get into the corners and slope uh, towards drain. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be doing using this in this video, but you know, that make sure you know that this is available if you're gonna extend your shower bigger than what this pan is. So we're gonna get this subflooring put in our shower for the curbless system. And one of the first things you wanna do is make sure that your floor is level. As you can see here, we are a good quarter inch out of level. It's critical, critical to get this level. Uh, so what we're gonna do is make sure when we frame in the plywood between here, that we raise this enough to make up the difference of this unlevelness. Because everything's gonna really rely on a level surface for this pan system to flow correctly towards the drain. That's the first thing you need to do is just make sure that uh, when you address this framing that you make it level. So what we're gonna use is this as a reference point. So typically if, you're, if you're, all your joists are level, you could just easily just use this as a um, template to make this even with your joist. But since we're out of level, we're gonna fix that problem by just raising this slightly to where we need it to be level and we'll just do that all the way on every single joist to raise this we're using a scrap of three quarter inch plywood because we need to lower these studs below the top of the joist by three quarters of an inch for our subfloor so now that you have 
your levelness established on this one I would just leave plywood on here and then just keep everything straight with the bottom to level rather than level each piece out it's now going to be more important to make everything is in a flush straight line so just raise everything up to your level it'll be more important to keep it straight than it is to try to make everything level you don't you want to make everything a flat surface so again, the reason why we're doing this, we need to drop these studs three quarters of an inch below the existing joist because we're gonna be putting three quarter inch plywood in those spans. And the reason why we need to drop the subfloor by three quarters of an inch is because we're gonna be setting our pan over top of that. And when you set your curbless pan over top of this sub subfloor, for lack of a better term, it's gonna be relatively even with the existing three quarter inch plywood that's on the outside of the shower area. Now of note, if you wanted to, you could actually carry the Vim curbless shower pan further into the bathroom area. That way the shower pan would be sloped a little bit more toward the drain, but you don't necessarily have to do that. It's just an option if you wanted the shower pan to be slightly wider and outside the shower area. And as a matter of fact, Vim has a great tutorial on how to do that and how to feather float the shower pan if you wanna see that over on their website. But in this case, we wanted to restrict the shower pan to just the area in which the shower was going to be located and you'll see in another video how we waterproofed everything and kept our slope so this is kind of a common problem when you tear out a subfloor not every situation is the same but if if you end up having a joist that's pretty close to the wall but it's not underneath the wall um, we need to fill this area with something with some kind of support now the support that we're really trying to obtain is just support for the shower pan we're not like trying to have a load bearing wall on this so uh, you don't have to actually have a full two by six framing member underneath of it unless you're trying to support the wall in some fashion all you're really looking to do is just to get something that will just allow the thin set to support the pan and basically the way i like to do that is just to get a two by four the lit can be a little bit difficult to do sometimes but just get a screw in there We'll get some glue for underneath the wall and just pop this underneath. Then we can just nail this from the side here. I kind of moved out a little bit, but that's that's not gonna hurt anything. And then what we could do is go through the bottom plate with a three-inch screw and grab grab that support and then I'll just, I'll just fill this little void right here with some liquid nail just so that you know my thin set doesn't ooze down into that but this this is all you really need uh, in order to support that pan so if you can just go through the through the bottom plate and grab that 2x4 that's usually the easiest way to go so as you can see we had to do the exact same thing for the left side of this main shower wall, but not a big deal, easy fix there to do. Now the next step is to get the measurements for your three quarter inch plywood. So that's what we're doing here. You just cut that to size, you apply liquid nails over top of the two by fours that you stuck below, three quarters of an inch below your joist, add your three quarter inch plywood over top of that and then nail it. So this is what we did for the rest of this shower floor. And keep in mind, the reason why we're putting in the sub sub floor again is for the Vim pan. So with creating this level, you can see it's kind of recessed or it's it's sitting above our joist here. But when we go to thin set, you can just fill that in with thin set and that won't be a problem. So that'll be an easy way to keep this level and adjust for the levelness. Keep in mind, if you don't have a nailer to secure this three quarter inch plywood to the studs, you can use deck screws to do the exact same job. So that's just a different option for you. Okay, so on the Vim shower pan, they recommend that you put some additional blocking around the drain location. So I would just suggest, now when you cut the plywood out, you need an eight inch circle around the center of the drain. So if you put this framing about six inches or even five inches away from the center of the drain, then you'll have plenty of room to cut that hole and not have it interfere with your pan. So put two pieces of blocking 
perpendicular to your other joists just for additional support for that drain location. So what we're doing here is adding extra two by fours, three quarters of an inch below the joist. The reason why we had to add the extra two by fours is our joists were spanning a little bit more than 16 inches on center. So we needed to reduce that width by adding the two by fours. And again, remember we're just spacing them three quarters of an inch below the joist, the existing joist so that our plywood will fit in that space. So again, here we're just adding our cross members and we're gonna nail those to the two by fours. So I'm just blocking, you know, probably, you know, four and a half to five inches away from the center because you, you want to have a some playroom with that drain to move back and forth on it because when you, when you cut this plywood you want to have an eight inch circle all the way around the drain so you don't want to have this blocking interfere with that. Just make sure that this is center because you want to put your eight inch circle on your plywood. So just make sure that you're center, or if not, just measure to one end to where your center is. So we've got six and an eighth. So that's going to be my center point. And then we want to come out four inches. And we'll just measure this way four inches too. This bucket actually is eight inches, so we'll just so we're just using a spade bit to get our hole started, and then we're using a jigsaw to cut out that eight inch circle for the bottom of the vim pan. So then you just need to apply your liquid nails on top of all of the two by fours that you added there and nail that piece of plywood just like you did for the other ones on the floor. I'm going to use some liquid nail. I'm just going to fill in some of these grooves just to keep the thin set from oozing down in there. Just kind of make it a little bit easier when I go to thin set over all of this. I wouldn't do this if you're going to thin set it right away. I would, I would just go ahead and move on to the thin set area if you're going to move on to the pan right now, but we're going to do the pan another day. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is determine where the drain location is. If you have the ability to install the drain afterwards, it actually makes it a little bit easier. But if you had a plumber that already set it, then you're kind of stuck with what you have and you want to just basically measure off of this uh, to cut down the pan to fit. As we did it said in the prior video, you just want to make sure you have an eight inch circle cut around the plywood of your drain. This will ensure that you have the ability to, to move that, you know, basically have enough room for that recess of that pan. The pan has a really large, basically reinforced portion of it that sticks down below the subfloor. So you really wanna make sure that you're not fighting yourself by having too small of a hole. So let's see what our full width is. Our full width is the 60 inches. So we don't have to cut it down lengthwise it's not a bad idea just to double check to see how square you are just to see if there's going to be any problems with squareness and then whether you have to adjust that you'll be able to find that out as soon as you get the pan in here but it's just kind of a good idea to know whether we're a little bit on square there but i think we have a little bit more of a gap coming out towards the edge let's just see what that comes out 60 inches okay so anyways, so we're going to be cutting down the pan to the edge of our subfloor. So we have 30 inches all the way along here. So it's going to be 30 inches overall. Let's find the center of our drain. So our center of our drain, we have it 14 and 5 eighths. Uh, so you want to make everything as tight as you can. You might have to do a little bit of additional cutting if you're unsquare, but try to make that pan as tight as possible to, to your framing. So we'll go 14 and 5 eighths to the center of the drain. Let's check it this way. And we're exact and with using the full pan, you're gonna have to it's gonna have to be 30 inches on center. Uh, there's really not gonna be any movement either way 
uh, that you're really going to be able to cut it. So if you have your plumber install the plumbing, make sure it's 30 inches at least lengthwise. Like I said, so we're good on that. You get a straight edge on here to, to determine the center of this drain. The overall width of this recess is six and basically six and a half. So we should be three and a quarter, three and a quarter to the center. So we'll make this our see our screw holes here too are determining showing that that's the middle. Okay, so we said from the back edge we said 14 and 5 eighths to the center. Make sure everything looks even there. Alright, so we'll go ahead and cut this and we'll cut our width after we cut it. Okay, and then we'll just cut 30 inches over. So as you can see, you can see how this big hub off the back here needs to recess into the plywood. So that's why it's important to have enough wiggle room around this thing so you're not fighting putting this in. Okay, and we'll just check our ability to put the drain together here. And that's a nice, nice fit. So. Okay, so before we go thin setting everything, we're gonna make sure we get this pan completely ready. Now that we cut off our edge flange, we need to recreate these recesses for the screws on the edges. So basically every eight inches, just go inch and a half from, you know, inch and a half, inch three quarter, let's just say inch and three quarter from the edge of your pan. And then every eight inches after that, we'll be count, uh, putting a countersink fit for the screws. Just off that line there. And we'll just go kind of reduplicate what they have there, three quarters of an inch in from the edge. And same thing on the back. Let's go in the center here and every eight inches. Okay, so we'll use our countersink bit. And basically you're just allowing these screws, number 14, inch and a half screws to recess so as long as you're flush that's all that's all that's required so for this project we use care elastic that's an additive that you add to an unmodified thin set in this case carabon the care elastic will make this a modified thin set you mix that per the directions and then vacuum the subfloor you need to fill this entire waffle area with thin set so again just using a modified thin set to fill the whole back portion of the pan now if you had the full pan like a four by five pan you're basically going to be using an entire bag of thin set to fill all that in. Okay, so once you got the pan all thin set, let's go ahead and do our subfloor. And you always want to wipe down a wood subfloor so that the thin set doesn't suck all the moisture out of the thin set right away. So not only that, it just gives you a chance to clean everything. Okay, so use the flat side of the trowel to burn it into the sub floor first. And do directional troweling. And this is also another area, of, if you needed to make this level, like we already leveled the subfloor so we're good, but if you needed to do additional leveling, you can add more thin set in the low areas and just build that up. So, so there's many different options if you have an unlevel floor system that you can 
have many chances to level that out. I'm gonna go ahead and set the pan in. Because the Vim shower pan is so much thin set on it, make sure that you line it up as best as possible before setting it on the subfloor. Yeah, so you just wanna make sure that this drain's gonna fit and make sure that there isn't any adjusting that needs that's needed on the pan. Now with all this thin set, it is gonna be very difficult to move this. So I mean, I would use either a big pry bar or something if you needed to move it left to right. This way, I mean, you can normally get in between the plywood and this and, and tweak it, but you just wanna reset this, especially if your drain pipe is already placed like this. Now, I mean, if you have access below, then obviously no big deal. You can just have the pipe dot extend down and be no problem. So now that you've got everything set, you can go ahead and use your inch and five eighths screws. Well, inch and a half is minimum. Just put them all on your new counter sick sunken area. Probably the most crucial area is this portion right here because this is going to ensure that that pan slopes down towards the drain. I just like to double check, make sure everything looks good. The last thing you want is some kind of big hump that's going to create a problem. I'm going to go ahead and attach this drain to it. And you can allow this to extend wild up out of the drain and still connect it. Uh, but basically what we're going to need is an inside pipe cutter to cut this down close to the drain. So the first thing is that this comes with 100% silicone. So this is the only portion of the drain that you're actually going to be siliconing. So just put a generous bead all the way around this flange. And use it all because like I said there's no other part of the drain that you're using this silicone for. So just be careful you don't get the silicone into the screw holes obviously, but. And you slide this down until you basically get, yeah, like these two little notches that kind of slide down in and then use the screws that it comes with. All right, then I would tighten this as if you were tightening a, a tire one side to the other. Okay, then this comes with like a little grease for your rubber gasket that will go over the pipe. So make sure that this, there's two sides here, there's a flat edge and then a beveled edge. You want to have the beveled edge um, sitting up. And then you have your tightening collar. And you can see there's little notches at the top. It has a bevel portion here. This goes down into the drain. Basically, when I get that rubber gasket down, it's the point where you can start to thread on your, your collar, your tightening collar. Basically, I'm just using the flat edge of this wrench to press down on it. So we're just going to adjust the last little bit with a, a flat headed screwdriver just going to the edge and just making sure that this is nice and tight against there. So the next step, which um, is to just use a inside pipe cutter and cut this down to where it's flush with the bottom of this. So for now, I'm just cutting this so it's below here. I forgot my inside pipe cutter for right now so I can get my waterproofing done. I'm just cutting this so that it's down below my drain and then we'll clean this up with a, a pipe cutter afterwards. But essentially you just want to allow that fabric and waterproofing to go over the entire drain assembly and then once everything dries you're, you're basically putting this in as your clamping ring. We'll show you how that's done but it's important that this drain at least sits down below the drain assembly at least temporarily.
The next video is going to show you how to waterproof the Vim Kurgle shower pan and the entire bathroom floor. So make sure you check that out. And if you're looking to learn how to simplify the craft of building custom bathrooms, make sure you take a look at bathroomrepairtutor.com. We'll put a link to it right here. That's a phenomenal website for you. Thanks for watching today's video. If you have any questions, ask them down in the comments. Take care.